In this video, we are going to find asymptotes by looking at graphs. We will connect this concept to functions later in the course. So for right now, we're just going to look at the graph and determine what the asymptote is. Now, starting with vertical asymptotes, the key thing to understand about them is that they are a brick wall that the graph cannot cross. You will notice here, looking at this graph, it looks like it's peeling up towards infinity at this end and down towards negative infinity at this end. Now I'm describing the uh, y values. That that red dotted line is our asymptote. You see this traveling right here in the middle of the screen. Now the reason it's a brick wall is because the function does not exist at that point. It is created by something that makes it so you cannot substitute in, in this case, 2. So, for example, it might look something like this, 1 over x minus 2. So if I tried to sub in 2, I would get 1 over 0, and that would be undefined. So something like that can create a vertical asymptote. It's where the function does not exist. Now, how we describe a vertical asymptote, or a horizontal asymptote, or a slant asymptote, is by the equation of a line. So the vertical asymptote, in this case, is a vertical line. So how do you write the equation of a vertical line? Well, hopefully we remember from our previous course, that would be x equals, and in this case it's 2, because the it, it is occurring at 2. So we describe them with equations of lines. Now, what else are we going to talk about with asymptotes? Well, the behavior that your graph has at that asymptote will be something we're going to talk a lot about. This is going to come later in the class. Uh, it'll, it'll be very similar to a concept called end behavior. So we're going to learn a little bit of language right now that will, will be useful throughout the entire class. So what we're going to say here is we're going to focus in on this part of the graph right here. What is the graph doing? Well, it's going up, right? So therefore, we're going to say as x approaches 2, what y value is our graph approaching? y is approaching infinity. And so here at this side, what we would say is, okay, well, what's happening here? As x approaches 2, y is approaching negative infinity. Because what is our y value doing? Well, our y of the graph is pointing down. So the y values are going down toward negative infinity, as where for this side, it's going toward positive infinity because the arrow is pointing up. Now, is that always the case? Absolutely not. Well, it is the case that they're always going towards infinity because the graph has to go somewhere. And if you if you're going to run into a brick wall, no one wants to do that. So the graph's going to go somewhere. But it is possible for them both to go the same way. So here we would say as x is approaching, I'll make up a number, negative 4. What is our y value doing? So as x approaches negative 4, y is approaching infinity for this side. And then on the same side, on the other side, as x approaches negative 4, y is approaching infinity. Okay, so we have talked about how do you label your, your sides? How do you describe what's occurring? You're going to say as x approaches, and, and this arrow is always read as approaches. So we're going to say as x approaches the x value, wherever that brick wall is, that's our x. That's our as x approaches. Then you're going to say, what is the y values doing? Are they going up towards infinity? Are they going down towards negative infinity? And there you go, vertical asymptotes. But the key to these is they cannot be crossed because they are created by a discontinuity. They are created by an x value that is undefined in the function. So therefore, you cannot cross them. Horizontal asymptotes. Not that case. Now, you will notice I, I, I took the same graph, right? And the horizontal asymptote wasn't labeled on the graph, but that's okay. What we're going to say here, the definition of a horizontal asymptote is asking the question of what y value the graph approaches as x approaches positive and or negative infinity. Depending on the graph, you might talk about one or both. So, in and, and when we say as it approaches positive or negative infinity, we're thinking just as it goes to the left and as it goes to the right. So, for example, we'll focus in on this end right here of, oh, let me get that one off the screen. There we go. We're going to focus on this graph here and we're going to say, okay, as my graph is going to the right, so we're looking right here at this end point, 
what y value does it look like my graph is approaching? Now, horizontal asymptotes require a little bit of critical thinking. They require you to kind of make a guess and make a conjecture. So if you were to imagine to fill in a horizontal line here, that's what I would guess. I would say it looks like it's approaching 3. So how would we write that? That would be as x approaches infinity to the right, right? Because the x values going this way are getting bigger. They're going towards infinity. So as x is approaching infinity, y is approaching 3. So then similarly, we do on the left here, we would say what x value are we approaching? Well, as x approaches. All right, we're going to the left. So the left, what are my x values doing? They're getting more and more negative. So they're still getting big. So it'd just be negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching 3. And that's horizontal asymptotes. Now, that's how we describe them. Very similar to vertical asymptotes, right? But how do we write the equation? Well, the equation of a horizontal asymptote, that's a horizontal line. So hopefully you remember from previous classes that y equals 3 would describe this equation here, right? Describe the equation of the horizontal line. So a horizontal asymptote is represented by a y equals. Now, one big difference here is horizontal asymptotes are not created from a discontinuity. They're just created by asking the question, what y value is my graph approaching as we go to the left or go to the right? So they can be crossed over. So I wanted to just make sure I showed you a graph that demonstrates that. So if as you look at this graph and you'd say, well, the forget about the left, we're only going to talk about to the right here. Okay. As my graph goes on and on and on, would you say that it seems like it's kind of narrowing in on a value? Is it kind of oscillating around some value? Because <clears throat> you'll notice we have a really big peak and then a and, and little, it's getting smaller and smaller. The distance that it's traveling up and down is getting smaller and smaller, right? So therefore, what would we say? Well, to me, it looks like there's a horizontal asymptote right here at one and it looks like this this line is bouncing up and down over one and it's getting closer and closer and closer to it now but the key to this is notice it passes through it right there it passes through it right there it passes through it right there right it's okay to go through a horizontal asymptote because it's not created by a discontinuity it's just saying what y value does it look like my graph is approaching eh, it looks like it's approaching one so as x goes towards infinity, y is approaching 1. Okay, so the key concept I need you to walk away with, horizontal asymptotes, cross them, doesn't matter, right? It's not created from a discontinuity, you can go over them. It's just begging the question, what y value is your graph approaching? Okay, as x approaches infinity or negative infinity or both. Now, a slant asymptote or an oblique asymptote is the same thing as a horizontal asymptote. The only difference is it's not horizontal. It's a slanted line. So I gave you I gave you this one so you can kind of see as you're going towards toward as x goes towards infinity, notice it kind of looks like my graph is going this way and maybe it looks like my graph is going this way. So how would I describe this? Well, as x is approaching infinity, what y value is my graph approaching? Infinity. Okay, and then over here on the other side, as, whoops, try again, as x approaches negative infinity, because my graph is going to the left, so it's negative infinity, what y value is my graph approaching? Well, it looks like my graph is going down, right? The y values, it's pointing down, so therefore it would be negative infinity. Great. So how do I describe the equation of the slant asymptote? And this is going to come, I, I believe you're going to refresh this, but I believe this is also um, um, review material. So how do you write the equation of a line? Well, in this case, it's really simple. What we're going to do is we're going to look for the y-intercept. I'm going to say it's at negative 2. I'm going to cheat a little bit. So therefore, how do I write an equation of a line? Well, one way is y equals mx plus b. And if I have my y-intercept, we're good to go. So therefore, my y-intercept is negative 2. And my slope, well, it looks like we are rising, we're rising 1, running 1, rising 1, running 1. Pretty darn close, right? So therefore, it looks like we have a slope of 
slope of rise 1, run 1, which means we have a slope of 1. So therefore, y equals 1x minus 2 for the y-intercept, or y equals x minus 2. So the fun thing about a slant or oblique asymptote is they are equations of lines 2. They're just not as easy to write, <laughs> so you have to you have to remember how to write equations of lines to write these. Um, and in the class, we're going to review how to find all this using equations. So right now, all you're doing is looking at graphs. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video.